Hello everyone, and welcome to my solo RPG journal. Today we are going to play another game of Frostgrave. Or I'm going to play another game of Frostgrave. I'm not actually playing it with anyone else, but if you're watching, welcome. I'm glad to glad that you are watching. Uh, leave a comment if you'd like. Uh, great to see some kind of engagement if I can get any. I'm uh, not streaming this one, um, as this game unfortunately leaves... I'm going to spend too much time just looking at rules and rolling dice and not really getting too much of an opportunity to get any kind of interaction with chat, so it's something that's probably good to pre-record. But, here we are. Um, this is my mausoleum map. Uh, I believe that the buildings are probably supposed to be a little bit further away from each other. Um, as they're supposed to be six inches apart. But, on a 3x3 three three board, this is what, what I ended up building. So, this is an interesting little scenario. We've got these three houses that used to be inhabited by monks. Inside them, each is uh, a treasure. Um, so this one in the middle is the central treasure, so it is a little bit different from the other ones, mainly in that it has to be picked up by a model, it can't be picked up by a spell or anything until it has been picked up by a model. Now I've uh, gone and added doors to each of these, uh, something I'm going to do that's a little bit different to, from the scenario as written is that a model will have to open the door. Um, so that will actually cause it to use its move action there when it gets to it. When it does, I have to roll a die to see if one of these nasties shows up. So we've got wraiths, uh, which are a little bit nasty, with a move of 6, uh, armor of 10, only a health of 2, but they have energy drain, they're immune to normal weapons, they're ethereal, and they have magic attacks. So they are nasty. The other, other nasties are ghouls. Ghouls are not quite as nasty. They're just a creature, an undead creature with armor 10, fight 2, health 2, move 6. So they're a lot easier to deal with. It's just a matter of doing it. Uh, or it could be empty. We might only have a treasure in the room. So the two warbands facing off against each other are our soothsayer whom I have named. I've gone through and named them all. I haven't named uh, the Soothsayer's Apprentice who died last turn, but here we have uh, Karen Karin um, Argdal and her apprentice, Evelina, her new apprentice that she's just spent a bunch of money to uh, recruit. I'm using the same model for the moment, though I think that my archer models I've actually swapped around. I think I was using this archer model on the other party. Anywho, we have the same uh, warband uh, configuration because I could not be bothered uh, changing that, mainly. They are facing up against our illusionist and her party, uh, Harriet Vin. And her apprentice, Killian Quinn. I did not name them to be uh, so similar, but there we have it. And there, we're up against the same configuration of two archers, two infantrymen, and four thieves. So, leaving that aside, it's pretty much time to get in there and start the game. So the first thing that I always forget are spell lists. So if I just turn this off uh, and this on, we can see that I've got, ah, raise zombie. I do believe 
that the zombie doesn't just disappear. Or at least that's how I've been playing it. So, we've got... Let me find the spell. Raise zombie. A uh, spellcaster adds a zombie to their warband as a temporary member. If the spell is cast before the game, a zombie can be deployed normally. If it is cast during the game, the zombie appears in base contact with the spellcaster. A warband war may only have one raised zombie at any one time. If the zombie is killed or exit the, exits the table, raised zombie can uh, be cast again to create another. So... Uh, nothing to say that it dies or doesn't die in there. Maybe there is some there somewhere. This is something somewhere else in the book. I don't know where it is. So we're just playing with... Zombie didn't die last time. They get a new zombie. Zombie didn't die? I don't think the zombie died. I think the zombie ca carried some treasure off. Ah. Uh... So, don't need to cast that spell. The other spell that we are starting with is Reveal Secret, which I get to cast twice. So, Reveal Secret once uh, on the wizard. 17, so she gets that off. And... Meryl? Wow, I just named them right then. The Apprentice... We'll cast Reveal Secret and also get that off. So she was looking for a uh, 14. We don't have any other before game spells. Why have I got Reveal Secret to be touch? I've listed that wrong, I think. But I've got Reveal Secret listed as a 12, so it's a 14 for the Apprentice. So she gets it off with a 17. So that is not an issue. Now... If I jump over to uh, the Illusionist, then we don't actually have any before game spells to cast. So that's done. Let me just take notes that I Soothsayer has. Before game, cast, reveal, crit, twice. I think I've had problems remembering that in the past, so we won't have problems this time. Now, for those who don't know, reveal secret allows uh, you to roll on the treasure to table twice for, uh, well, on two different treasures in this case, assuming I get two different treasures off. So... Let's uh, pull another die out and roll uh, initiative for the different parties. So our Soothsayer gets an 18. And for the Illusionist, 15. So the Soothsayer gets to set up first. And she is going to... Ooh. Hang on, I need to I need to get better at that. The soothsayer has crumble. So the soothsayer is actually going to set up. Ah, uh, there's all those rocks here. I did make that difficult. Uh, the Soothsayer will... Set up... The Soothsayer will set up here. Which is going to put... Our Illusionist... Over on this side of the board.
feel like I'm doing the zombie thing wrong. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Can I not? Apparently, in Tailspire, there is a maximum grab distance. There you go. You learn something new every day. So, oi. Maximum grab distance again, there we go. Okay. So, uh, setting up sort of close to the middle here. We're going to set up here. We have a whole three inches set up three inches away from the board. So I'm going to put you here away from the edge of the board. And you there. We're going to get uh, the arches together in here. Now I'm going to say that I can't put them in, in the buildings in this case. Something that we, I'd, I'd probably change later on a different game. It's just something that we're going to call today. I'm going to put a thief here. You up front a little bit more. And sort of just spread out along a, in a line like that. Using crumble, we intend to get straight through that wall. So that puts us here. And so we're going to put uh, Archer on each side here. Um, how high, how high is that? You can climb, they can climb that. Just. They can just climb that. Climbing takes double movement. Don't actually have crumble available for the illusionist, I believe. So... The illusionist can't just get through the wall. They can get over the wall, but not through the wall. Which I think is the intent of the thieves. We're going to have an infantryman go with each spellcaster. So, with setup done, we roll initiative for them. So rolling for the illusionist as we're on her side of the table. 11. And then for the soothsayer. 14. So the soothsayer goes first. So, on the beginning of the soothsayer's turn, she is not going to group activate with anyone because she wants to cast a spell first. And that spell is going to be, Shusaya, Crumble. So she needs a 12 to get that to work. 18, no worries. So reading the text for a Crumble, Basically, it will allow her to crumble one of those walls. Crumble. This... Uh, excuse me. Uh, the spell... 
could only target inanimate structures and buildings. Speeds up time in a small area of the structure, causing it to collapse. Create a doorway-sized hole through any wall, which should be indicated on the table somehow. So it doesn't say anything specifically about size past that. So... I need some kind of marker. I'm really looking forward to Hero Forge support turning up in this game. Um, I mean, I could complain. I don't want to replace the terrain pieces. So... I haven't used that. I am... I could go interior... Something like a painting I was thinking. Like, why would you have paintings on these walls? Mirrors. I like, I kind of like the mirrors. So we'll do that. And so she's going to cast that on that square. So that is a doorway. That will do. Okay, so we have a doorway that people can get through. And she is going to walk through. Uh, that's one inch. Oh good, the measure does go straight in. Uh, straight through there. Let me just change the atmosphere a little bit because that snow is a little bit hard to see. Uh, let's see if I can do it with a post effect. Hmm. I want to change the exposure. Hmm. It's a bit too dark. Let's change the sky. There we go. If I do that, I can set the exposure back to one. And we can see the tiles a little bit easier. I hope that's actually working on stream. But changing the time of day makes it a little bit easier to see. So. She's moving to here. And I need to record. Uh, cast crumble. And. Uh, as she didn't group activate with anyone, it is now the illusionist's turn. So, our illusionist is going to group activate. And she's going to group activate with one, two, three. Uh, okay, and so this, these ones, six, uh, five, hang on. Let's uh, grow to the edge of the wall to the thing, so that's two inches up. Two and a half across, so that's four, uh, five inches. So first move... He's actually going to get to the other side of the thing, taking a little bit of advantage of how you get two moves, and they're two separate moves. Uh, we're basically going to jump over the wall and fall to the bottom. Uh, 
and our uh, spellcaster is going to get to here uh, and he's going to get right up behind her these two are going to go to this door them uh, together I think He is going to pass her by three inches to that stone there. And we're going to look at what spells she can cast. So, Cold Storm isn't hugely useful in this scenario. And she has to roll an 18 to um, make it work. Telekinesis isn't great here. Uh, push, she could push him along a little bit more. I think that the thing to do is ca to cast beauty on herself. So I'll click on her. And we need a, what, 10 to make that work? 18 so she has beauty up what beauty does is it makes uh, it a lot harder for people to attack her i believe that they any member of an opposing war band must make a will roll with a target number equal to the casting roll if they wish to do any of the following move into combat with the spellcaster make a shooting attack that would potentially hit the spellcaster um, including shooting attacks generated by spells or anything, any spell that casts the... Okay. So in that case, anyone has to roll an 18 in order to attack her at all. So, our illusionist... Uh... has cast uh, beauty TN 18 great so that brings us to the apprentice phase and our apprentice is going um, our soothsayer's apprentice what was the name? Evelina is going to cast uh, the same thing, Crumble, again, uh, right here, so that we have two doorways and easier access, and she's also not going to group activate. So, in order to cast Crumble, she needs to roll a 14. Sixteen. Can I... yep done and she's going to move six inches to there I'm going to need, actually, hang on a, just a sec while I... Uh, there we go. So, that's there on both sides now. That brings us across the other side of the board again. To, was it Killian's turn and he's going to group activate with these two he can't uh, no no one else is close enough to group activate with him which is fine uh, 
uh, is going to get to here. This guy is going to get to here. And this guy's only just going to get up the top here. So second move, uh, this guy's going to get up to here so that he can see here, I think. So that he can see down over the ruins. Uh, this warrior is going to move around Killian to here. And Killian wants to cast a spell. I think he might cast beauty on himself as well. There's nothing to target with any of the other spells that he can cast that's at all useful right now. So he's gonna ta um, cast beauty. He needs a 14, a 12. A 12? A 12 to get this off. He casts it with a 14. So let me record that. There. And he's got the health. Brilliant. Okay, so that brings us to the rest of the Warband's turn. And we're starting... Oi! What's going on? Um, there is a bug in this game where it just, uh, every so often, decides that it wants to just continue moving by itself. It is a little bit frustrating. So... At this point, with these two doorways open, it just makes sense for everyone to run through. So, this guy gets to move six. Oh, hang on. This guy's just behind him through the same door. This guy is closer to the other door, however. This guy gets to move seven, so I'm just gonna put him next to there, because I don't I don't care enough to get the measuring right. This guy is just below. Uh, the this guy is in a slightly different position, however. I'm supposed to move them one at a time. Hang on. Let's just finish moving everyone else first. So you get another three to there. And you'll be right behind him. You get another three and a half. You'll get in behind. Now. Seven inches and then seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, he'll move with these thugs. So he'll just get in there. These two are going to move... Uh, so that one's going to actually get on that first square. 
And this one's going to get up the stairs most of the way. Oh, I moved him too far. They only get nine, don't they? Six each, yep. So that's sort of there, I believe. Brilliant. So they're going for the doors. Brilliant. And now it's time to see where everyone else gets to. This guy, I'm pretty sure he can climb to here. Yep, just. He's pretty much just going to get here and stand here. Uh, oh. No, he's, he's going to actually move to here so that he's got line of sight because this tree sort of gets in the way. And he will be able to start shooting next turn. This guy's moved. Those guys have moved. It's just these two that haven't. Oh, there should be a zombie over here. What happened to that zombie? Uh, zombies, how far... What are your move? What does your movement look like? It's four inches, so he gets a whole six. Brilliant. So these two are the only two that haven't moved yet. So I think that I remember I got made, uh, took advantage of the fact that falling just happens. And so these two get over here with their first bits of movement. And then I need to, I need to be better with this and move them both at uh, the same time, at uh, different times. But this guy's gonna get in there and can this guy move through here the, the model doesn't fit but that's okay I'm going to get this guy to just behind here and that is everyone so it's time to roll initiative again so the illusionist four probably will not be going first uh, with a roll like that. We'll be going first with a roll like that because the soothsayer got a two. Brilliant. Okay. So, what did I name Harriet Vin? Harriet Vin is going first. And she's going to group activate with this infantryman. Now this is all rubble, so he's only gonna get to there as he's moving through that, and so is she. But, is there anything for her to cast this time around? What does Blink do? Uh, blink is move the figure four inches in any direction. Figure may make a... Mm. That's not, not something I want to cast on my own guy at this point in time. Uh, useful for getting out of combat, potentially. Hmm. Hmm. Don't think beauty can be cast on other. Beauty's self only. Yeah, I've got that there on the page. All right. No, no extra spell casting. We're going to just move. Um. So half. So we're only going to get to here. Uh, for both of them, moving as they move through that rubble. And then we're going to head over 
to look at our soothsayer. So this time around, she's going to uh, group activate with these three models here. And everyone's moving. So you get seven. Oh no, you get six. It's this guy that gets seven. Uh, so let's... Not in the tree, on the ground there. And you will come up here. And then you're going to cast Hmm. What does Bones of the Earth do? That's an interesting spell. I believe that a skeletal hand reaches, reaches out. It's line of sight, so I actually have to target someone. Uh, but basically tries to grapple a person. So that's not great. Combat awareness could be good. Uh, leap. I can't see the thief. I'm going to try and leap this guy to the door here. So, to get a leap off, I need to roll a 12, which I do. So this guy gets jumped to here, which is good because he now has his second movement action to... Uh, how do I open this door? I think I just went away. It's not what I want. Mm. Maybe that this maybe the doors that I've used uh, aren't doors that open. I just put it on the side so that we don't lose it. So that's opened, and that means I need to determine what's inside here. So, on a 1 to a 6, there's nothing inside. On a 7 to a 17, it's a ghoul. And on a 17 to a 20, it's a wraith. 6. Ah, oh, sitting on top of the uh, geometry we can't see. Brilliant. Awesome. So, nothing is inside. That's pretty lucky. So, knowing that... Uh, our thief is going to jump over this barricade. So that's going to cost one. Uh, it's going to cost two inches of movement. And then he's going to have to fall a third. So we're at three. Um, so he's basically just going to get to the other side with his second m bit of movement. And. This guy's just going to get on top, I think. Or can he actually climb that? One. Yeah, he can climb it. and He's on top. Standing a little bit precariously. Okay, so recorded the casting of Leap. And we're... Ah, yes, the Illusionist didn't actually cast anything this turn. 
So the Illusionist's Apprentice is group activating with the other infantry man. Hang on, hold on a second. I need to turn that off. Um, so it's 1.3. So that's an inch and a half. Uh, so that's three, four. So he's kind of only going to get to here. And he's going to follow directly behind. I think, ooh, he was a little bit behind. I'm not sure exactly where he was, but he'll, I'll just put him there. And can he see any... Ooh. He can, he can make out the... Uh, he can make out the thug who's sitting there, which means that he can cast Bone Dart. So he needs a 16 to get it off. Which he doesn't make, and I'm not cutting for 8. So uh, 14. He's on 14 health, takes, takes a damage. And... Uh, failed bone dart. Uh, this guy gets to move another three inches. And then over here we have this apprentice. She is close enough to group activate with these two. So, uh, this uh, one's going to get to three and a half, five and a half. It's going to jump over here and get to the other side. Oh, this guy's a, also a thief, so he's going to, being a bit ahead, is going to be able to get to here. Oh, no, he wasn't... He was a bit too far away. But that means that this guy is going to be able to get to here. Uh, and our apprentice, what's six inches for you? Here. And she's going to cast leap as well. So to get leap off, she needs to hit a 14. which she doesn't, it's not more than, she doesn't miss by more than 10, so she only takes one damage and is at 14 health. All right. That takes us to, oh, hang on. These guys will actually get to be in front of the door. Uh, this guy. is going to get to the other side. And so now we have every other model that hasn't had a turn yet. So this gent is close enough to the door to get there and we'll open it. So let me just Hide this and move the door out of the way. And then we have to roll a die. Four. So that is less than six, so there is nothing in here. And so this thief is going to push past his friend, get to the treasure, and pick it up. 
And today, I've actually, I'm actually not going to use the extra monster rules. Uh, I know I usually do, but today I'm not going to do it. As we are already uh, rolling for extra monsters every time we're getting close to a treasure. Uh, hang on just a sec, I'll be back. Okay, I am back. So we've got uh, one treasure picked up. These two have moved. Uh, these two have not. So this one's going straight across here. He's not going to be able to climb that this turn. Um, we're now staring that guy down and we're starting to come in contact with the others so I'm actually gonna move him to be I think I moved him five and a half so he'll get to here So I'm saying that we can get through this gap like the other guy did. So he's going to get to there. Uh, this guy can clearly see the apprentice. I have arguably stuffed up making these maps because look at that line of sight uh, you are supposed to have your maps tightly packed and here that's 24 that's less than 24 inches of uh, uninterrupted sight so what am I doing rolling to hit a shooting attack uh, oh, oh. well that's uh, that's not gonna work uh, and he's not going to move this one can see this guy here who's just standing there and actually this position isn't as good as uh, I had thought it was going to be though I guess if he moved to here he'd be able to see the other thug but he's going to shoot this one Fourteen, uh, so that's a sixteen. I believe they've got a fight of two. Yep, shoot of two uh, versus the thugs' fight of two. I believe eleven. What did I? What did I roll? Of course, I don't remember. For six, six, sixteen versus thirteen. Uh, so the archer wins the thugs armor is 10 and so he's going to take 6 damage leaving him on 4 health um, who hasn't gone yet I think that that's that is everyone on this team. So over here, 
we've got a couple of archers who are not in. Uh, okay, so we're going to get... So it turns out these are not useful positions, which is probably good. That um, That's actually uh, good for my level design if I'm supposed to have... Uh, hang on. We're doing one at a time. This guy is going to shoot him. Yeah, if uh, the levels are supposed to be tightly packed so that you don't have clear line of sight, I, it has actually worked out. Uh, two is going to miss. This guy's going to get up and shoot the same guy. 22. Uh, let's just make sure that range is, uh, that is actually in range. Oh, he's not! Uh, clear line of sight, but not in range. So, actually that doesn't happen. Can see, uh, the infantry man, so I'll use the roll against him if, uh, he's in range, not in range. Only got 24 inches of range. So that position um, isn't that great. Uh, in that case, that's uh, those archers aren't as useful as I had thought they were going to be. Now, these guys have already gone, with the exception of him. So, he's going to get around... Uh, I'm gonna. S I'm not sure about moving through people's space. I'm just gonna say they can do it. Three, six. No, he has to end a move on the in the same space, so you can't. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna play it so that if you're moving, you have to end in an empty space. It, but you can move through other. Um, allies that's a, a loss uh, but we're going to have a contest over here for these three so he's going to start trekking over here so he gets to move a whole ten and a half with both of his movements. And our zombie is going to continue the track up here to be just behind the apprentice because I can hand off that um, that treasure to him. So, let's just turn that off. And uh, go back to the top of the round. That was quick. Okay, so this is for the Illusionist uh, initiative for the, the Illusionist is a 13 and initiative for the Soothsayer is a 17. So the Soothsayer goes first this time. Um, she's not going to group activate with anyone. Bones of the Earth, what is that? 14 to get off. Line of sight. A skeletal hand reaches out of the ground and grabs a target's ankle. The figure may not move or take any action until it escapes. Any form of magic movement except the leap spell allows the figure to escape on the hand escape the hand, otherwise the only way to escape is to fight the hand, which has a fight of zero and health of one. If the hand takes one point of damage it vanishes uh, and the target is free otherwise it 
Other figures in base contact may attack the hand or give support bonus. If the hand wins a fight, it does not. It does damage as normal. Uh, the spell may only be cast against a target that is standing on the ground. Large creatures are unaffected by the spell. The maximum range of the spell is 18. So. She's only going to move to here. And. She can see. Just. Ah. Uh, yeah. His head is poking over the fence. So she can see him. I'm not going to say that she needs to see his feet or his base. She can see the model. Um, and covered doesn't count for the spell casting. So she's going to cast. Bones of the Earth. She needs a 14. I don't know where that die went. But she got a 17. So he is stuck. Okay. Um... Let's have a look to see if there is something I can... I don't suppose we have a hand model, undead hand. No. But we will have in miscellaneous exterior a gravestone. So I'm just going to pop that in his space. And hopefully I'll remember what that means. So, going over to our illusionist. Um, uh, blink. Mm, no. So she's going to move with this guy. Uh, so that's going to be three inches to get out of.
Sorry about that. So he gets to there. Uh, in his first part of the move. Hmm. Oh, okay. I wonder... I don't know. Uh, something interesting with my mixer. Uh, lost audio for a second there. Okay, so... Is she going to get up behind him? Uh... Not really. For... Uh, yeah. So she's going to be just behind him. And is going to... Ooh. Wrong overlay. She's going to cast... Push. On him. Because now... She's actually going to get uh, the sp get him to go in a decent direction when she succeeds. Oh, except that she's going to fail push. She's not going to fail it by 10. Uh, so she's only going to take the one damage. I've tempted to, I'm tempted to cut for nine. Uh, <laughs> um, with that roll. Okay, failed. Failed push. Well, that's unfortunate. He's going to move another three inches. I say he's already paid the penalty for being on top of the stuff. Um, moving off, it's fine. Okay, so Apprentice here is going to group activate with uh, all three of these guys. So this guy is going to open the door. And we need to roll to see if someone shows up. 12. I believe we discover... Where are they? We discover... A ghoul. Uh, and so, this one... Is running in and just gonna get to him. Uh, the zombie is just gonna move to here. And what are you going to do, Miss Apprentice? Uh, Soothsayer spells. I'm looking at the wrong thing again. Soothsayer spells. Can't see anyone. Actually, you know who she can see. And she can cast Mind Control. And there is no... Three. Uh, there's no range. So she's going to cast Mind Control on this guy. Uh, she's going to move first. She doesn't want to get shot at again. She's going to get to there, and then she's going to cast Mind Control. On that archer, and she's going to get a 1. What does she need to get Mind Control off? She needs a 12. She has 14 hit points. 
she's going to cut for 13 damage to get a 14 on that roll. So she's going to have one health. She's banking on this guy not making his... Oh, she actually needed a 14 as well. So she's banging on him, failing his will roll. Which he... Hang on. Archers. Will, zero, 15. That is very unfortunate. Because she's now a sitting duck. Having... Successfully cast. Uh, having successfully cast. Mind control. She has one health left. And he's got a good line of sight to her. That's not good. Uh, I did group activate with these this guy as well so he's gonna get around here uh, now he's in base to base contact with that guy this one uh, gets two inches of movement um, and is so he's just gonna stay there um, uh, and we're gonna see some combat so This guy, this thug, is fighting this ghoul. Uh, get rid of the library and the chat history. So 14 to attack. So 14 versus something else. So that 14 actually turns into 18. Um, so he's going to take, I believe that ghouls have armor 10. Yep. So he's on to health. Uh, and we're going to run over here to our next apprentice who is not close enough to anyone to group activate with them. So... He's just going to come to here and cast push on this dude. Uh, so it's two plus whatever. Oh. He, okay. The illusionist uh, side did really well the last couple of games, but it's not doing great this time because he needed a 12 to get that off. So that's 10. That's a difference of 10. Is it uh, two damage? Uh, casting 10, 2 damage. So he is on 12 health. And that's... Whoops. Hitting the wrong button there. Um... So he is failing. Failed push. And we are on the Waban turn. What's going on with this? I've, uh. There we go. Who in here has yet to have a turn? Everyone. So, a thief is going to get to the door and open it.
so we need to roll. I think this is the last one. 15. A 15 is... Was it a 17 up? Eighteen up. I've found an error in on the book. It says seven to seventeen. The hut is occupied by a ghoul. Seventeen to twenty is occupied by a wraith. Anyway, a fifteen is neither of those numbers. So we're going to put another ghoul down. This guy is going to get to him and attack. Where'd that die go? Eight versus... That's ten versus uh, ghouls. What do ghouls get? Go five plus two, so seventeen. Uh, so our thug here is dead because he took an arrow that's unfortunate now this thug that's an empty uh, thing there this thug's actually going to run out around here and attack this dude. And now, because he's got the hand there, he's going to have a plus two to hit it because the hand is in active combat with this guy. So that's a 12. Versus a 17, I think. Uh, thugs versus thieves plus one so 17 but he has minus one damage so six damage so he's on full health uh, but this one this thief is going to get up here. Uh, so that's three. This keeps resetting. It's kind of annoying. Uh, so he's only going to get to... He'll get to the treasure. But it will take him both of his moves. Oh yeah, we have one that hasn't been opened yet. Um, I have a feeling that guy double moved. I don't. I don't know. I think that's everyone. I oh, know we have. Uh, we have our uh, two archers who are pretty useless where they are. So they are both. Going to. No, they're standing there and just waiting, hoping that they will be they will be useful. There you go. That's uh, interesting. This guy hasn't gone yet, so three. He's only just going to get to the other side of that. Uh, this guy is going to come in and get to here. It's going to be straight attack. Uh, 17, 18 versus 
five, so he's going to take uh, seven damage, so he's out. Ooh, luck is turning around a little bit there. Uh, this one is going to try and get out of... Uh, get away from the hand. Ooh, he's going to fail. The hand gets to attack with a four or five, so it's fine. This guy, I think, has picked that up. So he's going to get... Three and a half. He's going to get to here. Moving the wrong bits. Carrying the treasure. Okay, so this guy is going to first shoot uh, the apprentice. Uh, and miss. This guy can only see the ghoul, so he's not going to attack anyone. He's just going to sit there. Oh, can he? He moves across. He can't see any. Oh, hang on. If he moves across to here, he can see the wizard. So the wizard gets a plus one to her defense because the movement um, also plus four. So she got plus five, plus six. Is never gonna um, hit. Gonna get into combat with the apprentice. And now it's the creature turn. We have a couple of creatures on the board. So this one is going to attack the warrior, not warrior, the, what's it called? So he's got a 16 versus, ooh, an eight. So he's gonna take six damage. And here we've got this guy running out here. to attack uh, with a four versus a nine. Oh, I think I've got to stop. Unfortunately, I have developed a bit of a headache. Um, I think I'm gonna to have to call it there, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but I'll put this up anyway, and I'll see about recording uh, an ending to it at another time. Um, I've got the notes there, so we know what happened. Um, yeah, sorry to anyone who is watching this and enjoying it. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time.